So now that you have all that set up in your merge templates, let's go up to our custom proposals. So this right here, this is the proposal we're working on. And we need to go ahead and we need to use the sections button to tell it where to grab information and what template to shoot it out to. Just like if you've ever done this in Word, it's the same thing. So click on sections. You'll see I have already gone ahead and I have added our merge templates to these different sections. But all you do is you insert a new section, you give it a name, you describe it, you tell it what info center to look in to pull that information, and then you're going to grab the merge template, you're going to do a search for the actual merge template you want to use, select it, and you're good to go. So hit close, and it's always good to hit save when making changes in here. Uh, it's just best practice. So every time you add a section, you'll get a new tab up here. You'll see these are the different sections that we had. We have four sections. We have four tabs. They're all named the same. They're the same thing. So when you come here to the graphics, well, this is where you're going to set up. It, uh, for the cover, this is where you're going to set your graphic that we just set up on the cover. So over on the project for Delphi Research Lab, we have a graphic under the Files tab. So once you've associated there on the Info Center, you can come in here on this tab, and when you have it selected, hit Graphics, and you'll have a list of graphics. We've already pulled the one graphic that we have associated with it over here to the right. So you'll click on it, hit the Right button, and it'll pop up over here, and then from one to whatever number you have, that's where when we were editing in the merge templates and we were selecting proposal graphic, one, two, et cetera, this is where those numbers come from. The higher they are, the lower the number. So this top one concept would always be one. If we had another one, it would be two, et cetera. So you put them in, move up and down, depending on what number you want them to show as, hit close, and you're good to go right there on the cover page. Project approach, well, we didn't set up a, uh, a project approach here, but just to go into this real fast, all of this information is saved in our text libraries. This is really good stuff to have. You know, your firm history, this is something you probably have to supply in every single proposal you do, and it really doesn't change very often. Your quality control plan, it probably doesn't change much depending on just what kind of uh, project you're doing. You probably have the same quality control plan for most um, intersection projects. For most wastewater treatment facilities, you probably have a pretty similar quality control plan. So it's a very good starting point. And with your project approach, you probably have various project approaches for the different projects you do that obviously you are going to tailor to that project, but there might be some good information you use on every project approach. And this is, a, this is just a good starting point. So projects. You're going to want to come in and add the different records when you first set up this Atlantic Research Medical Facility or whatever your custom proposal is. You'll come in and you'll add these projects. This is where it's telling Fission to, to use these projects associated with this custom proposal. So these are the projects you are going to be exporting out onto those cut sheets that we set up. So you'll just hit the Add Projects, go through, find the projects you want, and select them. Well, on these projects, you're going to have different descriptions, possibly, even possibly different team and different graphics. So let's start with the graphics. Again, just like we did on the cover page, over on these projects info center, there's a file tab. And you have hopefully uploaded some graphics onto the files tab for these different projects. Well, you hit the graphics button. This is where you go through. And you can tell it, hey, take this, this graphic, move it over here. We're going to use it. That would now be graphic three. One note, you have to have access to the graphic for it to show in this. So I actually have these graphics saved to my desktop or somewhere on my, my computer so that Envision's able to go and reference it. The reason this one is not showing for me is prefer, one of them just wasn't showing for me a minute ago. It's because it, it was not uploaded by me. So you actually have to have access to it. I, I don't have access to a server environment, but I imagine if you had a server set up at your office, you'd be able to just upload them all from the server location, and Vision would recognize it. Uh, Sarah, I don't know if you, you know anything about that, but I, I am pretty confident that is to be true. And it is a follow-up on Kona. We, I will address that and get you an yes, exact answer to that. It is true. So you do need a server or you need some particular location. Keep in mind, however, one workaround for that. Um, I have people internally. We Again, we don't have a server. However, as long as the file path is exactly the same and they all go to the same name, so I can have things on my C drive and then I might have a folder called proposals and I have another one that's called projects, um, then maybe I have it organized by the project number. 
as long as the name, a location, and the name of the file is exactly the same on everybody's, then that will work as well. So I'm able to do that with Stacy, um, who is in Portland. We both have the same setup, so I sent her a zip file to un undo, and she's able to have the same photos. Okay, that's good to know. So if we both had a copy of Preferred Exterior, and we both put on our C drive, C exterior, uh, preferred exterior JPEG. We both use the same file path. We both have access to it then when in Vision. That's that's really good to know. Correct. Okay, I'm going to move on. So if, if anyone has questions about how these graphics work, they're very simple to set up. Once you do one, it pretty much makes sense for every different section. Uh, but if you have any questions at all through anything that we go, go over today, feel free to reach out to me after this. And then your descriptions. When you click on descriptions, you'll have access to all of the different projects that you have uploaded over on the uh, project side. That would be under the background tab. You'll be able to go and you can set up different. You'll see that this has SF330, a detailed description, a resume description. So you grab the descriptions you want to use. You move them over the right-hand side. You hit OK after you're happy with what you've selected. And then again, you come back to the descriptions, edit descriptions, and this pulls up all the ones that we've wanted to use. So you can even add here if you'd like to, but it's probably best just add them from the project. But if you want to add new information here, you easily can. I, I don't recommend it, though, but that is your preference. You're just And once you, if you do say, change something, when you hit that X button, it'll ask you to save. Go ahead and do that. And this is where you can also reorder how, what order these are going to appear in your export. So this, from top to bottom, is one to three, the order it is going to show up. Just use, the, just use these reorder buttons here to change it. It's very simple. And again, with your resumes, just like with the projects, you can choose which projects you want to show on your resume. So if you come up here to, oh, I'm sorry, if you click on Build Resume, you can either do it by category we're just for now going to do a pen because we're not going to save this. Uh, and then you can choose the different categories that you have set up over on your Employees Info Center side. And you can choose, uh, choose that. It makes really, if you're doing road projects versus uh, environmental projects, it's very simple to set up profiles across the board that allow you to really tailor this export for the individual project you're going after. And then you can also do a query with project restriction. This would be all the projects that this person has actually worked on. And then resume by query without project restriction. That is where you'd go and it may have a CEO who, even though his company worked on it, he did not work on the project. Well, that's where you can go and you can find those. And then once you have selected the ones that you want, you can open them up in the edit it resume. And you come in, make sure you like your formatting. Though, if you set up formatting in InDesign, it should override this. But if you did not, this is where you can make sure that you set your formatting up the way you like. Close out. And again, with the graphics, so over on the employee side, there is a Files tab. You would just upload whatever headshots there that you wanted to associate with this person. You could have multiple headshots. Maybe the top you want to, of your resumes, you like to do a serious headshot. And the bottom, you like to do a funny, goofy one. This is just where you'd set up the order of them. So now we have gone through setting up all this stuff. And it's time to get to the most beautiful thing, actually exporting information out of Vision into InDesign. So to do that, if you want to export just one section, let's say you just want the resumes, you would have resumes selected up here on the tab. And then you come to Merge Proposals and do Merge Current Section. That only works for the section you have highlighted. Or if you want to do multiple selections, m multiple sections, you just click Merge Multiple Sections. And one note, you can do one, just one section out of Merge Multiple. So I have the habit of always clicking Merge Multiple. It's, it just works for me, but you do it the way you want. So select what, what we what we set up earlier. We set up a cover, our resume cut sheet, or our project cut sheet, and our resumes. And then note, we're going to hit at the bottom, Merge as one document. This will put them all into one InDesign document. And then you're going to hit Merge. And this is going to take a few minutes, because you likely have a bunch of graphics. 